Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to MH Optical's YouTube page. Today, we're talking about frame and lens selection when it comes to high or difficult RXs. First, we need to understand what makes a difficult RX. Next, we need to know why that frame choice is so important when it comes to these difficult RXs. And lastly, we need to understand how we can combine these two things so our patient leaves happy and satisfied with the lenses and the frame we help select for them. Stay tuned. So first, let's understand what a difficult RX is. Things like high sphere power, high cylinder powers, big decentration and big prism, that's gonna all contribute to having a difficult RX. Now, what does that mean for our frame selection? Now, there's some frames we might want to avoid when it comes to having a difficult RX. Frames like drills. Drills are gonna be very difficult to achieve when we have a high RX. And those minuses is gonna be very thick on the edge to get that drill mount to work for those difficult high minus or even high plus lens. Big frames. Big frames mean bigger lenses, bigger lens blanks. And what does that mean in those high RXs? We're gonna have bigger flanges. In the big pluses, we're gonna have a really thick lens and just an all around ugly cosmetic look. Also semi rimless, they're not gonna help to disguise or mask that lens that we're putting into these frames with these difficult RXs. In most cases, you wanna pick a plastic or a xyle frame. That's gonna help disguise the cosmetics and the thickness that come with surfacing of a high prescription or difficult RX lens. If there's not one thing that you take away from this video, when you have a difficult RX frame is, we wanna try to match the patient's PD as close as we can to the frame PD. That's gonna give us as little decentration as possible, which is also gonna give us as little flange as possible. In just a second here, we'll switch angles and I'll show you a demo lens I did demonstrating this fact. So I surfaced a couple lenses here that we can help identify some of the problems that may come along with having a high RX and choosing the wrong frame. This is the frame selected. This is a 53A and a 17 DBL, giving us a 70 frame PD. I cut a minus 10 sphere with a minus one sill at a 55 axis. Now in the right eye, I gave the patient a 65 PD. Now that's gonna give us about two and a half decentration you notice that the lens looks pretty good, this minus 10. This is in poly, by the way. So the lens looks pretty good. We have a very small flange here. Now this will probably work very well for the patient. And we'll go out to the lab and cut them in a minute. We will see some thickness sticking out on the edge of the lens, but that's gonna come with a high minus lens. Now for the other eye, we gave the patient a 58 PD. Now look at the flange on this. This gives us a very big flange. And the reason for that is we have to cut so much prism, so much decentration into the lens when we generate it. The generator actually misses part of the lens because there's so much tilt or prism blocked into the lens when it cuts. Now when we attempt to edge this, we're probably gonna get a little bit of flange on the edge there, making the frame, making the lens less aesthetically pleasing. Now another option out there is lenticularization. This is a design by IOT. It's a single vision lens, however, we lenticulated the lens. This is the exact same frame, exact same RX, but it's a lenticular digital IOT lens. Now, right off the bat, we can put the lenses next to each other and you can see the thickness right away. You can see how much thinner this one is than this one. Same thing with this one. This one is going to be a lot thicker than this one. We're also cutting the flange totally out with this. With this design, it rounds all the edges and it uses the frame data to give us the best optical zone that we can. There will be a little distortion on the edge of the lens. However, it's going to be minimal and we won't have this big ugly flange that we do with a standard conventional surface lens. Now, let's head out into the lab and edge these lenses and take a look at the results after they're edged. Okay, so we're back from the lab here and we have our conventional surface lenses and our digital lenticular surface lenses. Now, it may be hard to see on our lens here that we had the proper patient measurements and the proper frame PD. Our edge thickness is coming out to about, coming out to about eight, seven, just under nine there. Now, the lens that we don't have the proper patient PD, now this is about a 58 PD, 
We have a little bit of flange in the lens still. We, did, we weren't able to cut it out. And our thickness is over 10, 10, 10, 1, 3. So we have a very thick edge thickness that could be avoided by choosing the proper frame for the proper patient. Now, of course, we can demonstrate the lenticular version of this lens. For the lens that was properly picked for the patient for the frame, that was a 70 frame PD and a 65 patient PD. We're looking at an edge thickness right under seven and a half, so seven, four, two. So we're looking at a pretty good reduction in thickness on the edge. And now for the one that was improperly picked, so this is the 58 patient PD with the 70 frame PD, we're looking at an edge thickness of around just under 8.5, so about eight and a half millimeters. So we did do better with the lenticular. They do definitely look cosmetically better. Here's the two rights together. So you can get a visual of what it might look like. And here's the two lefts together. So you can get an idea of what they might look like. When these lenses make their way into the frame, these lenses are gonna show a lot more thickness on the edge. They're also gonna be a lot closer to the patient's face, causing a little bit of discomfort versus a lenticular option where you're gonna be a lot farther away from the face. You also have a rounded edge here, so you don't have this harsh angle aimed at your face the whole time. So this is gonna be a lot more comfortable for the patient to wear. It'll also be masked pretty good by the frame, so the patient might be actually a little more confident wearing these lenses. So I hope that demo can help clear some things up when it comes to choosing the right frame for your patient. The frame choice can make the difference. And again, always try to match the frame PD to the patient PD when possible, especially when it comes to high or difficult RXs. This is gonna help the cosmetics of the lens, the comfort of the lens for the patient, the confidence in the person wearing that high RX is we don't have to put our patients in these Coke bottle lenses. We can choose a higher index. We can lenticulate the lens to get a smaller, thinner lens. Our patients don't have to fear wearing these big minuses or these big pluses because we can make them cosmetically look good by choosing the right frame. And of course, optics. When we put the patient in the right frame, we're going to get better optics. We're going to avoid flanges. We're going to have them looking out the center of the lens. Always consider the lifestyle of your patient. Does your patient need multiple pairs? Do they need safety frames? Do they need sunglasses? Do they need blue blocking glasses? Talk with your patient, get to understand them, see what they need. Always ask your lab for options. When you have a patient with a difficult RX and they need a safety frame, see what your lab has to offer. If they can lenticulate a lens and put it on a higher base than it normally would be, go for that option. Let the patient feel confident that they can have whatever they need for their lifestyle, even with their high prescription. So what can we take away from this video? Well, there's a couple things. Matching the patient with the right frame and lens is a skill, a skill that takes understanding and practice. That's why we need opticians in the world. That's what the optician is there for, to help pick the frame, pick the lens for the patient, because the patient isn't gonna have the same knowledge that the optician has. Understanding that the final product of the lens is dependent on the frame itself. For example, here we had a situation where a customer called and needed a high RX. We did it, it shipped out, no problem. A couple months later, they call in with the same RX, same patient, but it wouldn't cut out. What changed in the order was the frame. The frame was a bigger frame, the patient was a little smaller, and we couldn't get the lens to cut. Knowing that sometimes the lens is dependent on the frame is a real big help to your lab. So as the optician, let's recognize when our RX needs a little more attention. When we need to think, what kind of frame do I need to put this patient in? What kind of frame should I avoid? Know that there's different options out there other than a standard surface lens. We can lenticulate jobs very easy now. This is a digital lens world. We can customize each lens for those patients to make a thinner, better lens. We should also briefly touch on base curves when it comes to these difficult or high RXs. Now you're limited to what base curve you can put this patient in. If you have a high minus, like a minus 10 or up, you're gonna be in a very flat base and you're not gonna really have much of an option. So make sure that you're picking a frame that doesn't have a high wrap. Same goes for a high plus patient. You're gonna have a plus over nine, over 10, you're gonna have a high front curve. 
you're gonna want something with a little more wrap to it. That way, the lens will easily go into the frame, and again, it'll look better. You won't have a high wrap frame that you'll be bending forward to fit the lens. Your best bet with this is smaller labs. Smaller labs are gonna have more flexibility when it comes to this. The big box labs are going to be limited to their own designs and they may not have the options that your smaller independent lab will have. And lastly, the frame choice needs to reflect the patient as well as the lens. Even though the patient wants that drilled rimless, we need to try to steer them away from that lens selection because they have a difficult or high RX. We want them to be comfortable in their frame, in their lens selection. However, we need to help point them in the right direction to get that done. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you next time.